Hi everybody, it's Franny from Heidi and Franny's Garage and today we're going to do an oil change on our 996 Turbo. So it's pretty straightforward but there's a couple of extra bits they are kind of optional that I want to go over as well with you. You can either do them or not, your discretion, but I'll go ahead and do the entire process from start to finish and let you know. So that's up next on Heidi and Franny's Garage. Tools and supplies we'll need. We'll need our rubber gloves, a little catch tray for parts, our torque wrench, my adjustable wrench which is set to 27 millimeters. We'll need that for the big oil tank, my ratchet, an 8 millimeter hex for the plugs on the bottom of the turbos, 15 millimeter wrench and socket for the plug that's actually on the engine, and then the 19 millimeter is for the actual drain plug on the engine tank. I have an additional drain plug here that has a magnetic core so I want to check the one that's in the car and if it doesn't have a magnetic core I'll go ahead and swap it out with that one. We have our crush washers. The big one on the right is for the actual engine drain plug. The copper one goes on the big oil tank the two little ones are for the turbo plugs. Little rubber o-ring there goes on the end of the oil filter cover. It has a long snout on it and a rubber seal at the base of it so I want to check that and make sure it's okay. If not I've got a replacement. We have our oil filter and then a tool to get the oil filter cover off. We've got our rags and a little bit of shop towels. Our big oil catches in the back there. We're going to have to deal with about eight and a half quarts or more of oil. And our replacement oil. I've got 12 quarts here. We'll need about eight and a half probably. So we'll have some left over for top offs in between oil changes. I want to run you through the process for today. So our first step is going to be to take the car out and run it around a little bit and get it good and warm. We want to make sure our oil and everything's up to temperature before we start. And then the second thing we're going to do, and this is the first optional step, we're going to go ahead and pull the fuse on the fuel pump and then try to start the car and clear the fuel rails of any fuel. The reason we're doing that is so that at the end of this process, when we put the oil back in the car, we can go ahead and crank the engine over a bit and that will allow the engine to lubricate itself without the engine actually running. It's very similar to what I do on the 356 when it hasn't run for a while. You want to get the oil all the way through it before the engine actually fires. So that's, a, that's kind of an optional step though. Then we'll go ahead and raise the uh, car up on the lift drain out all the oil. We've got four places, believe it or not, to uh, drain oil. And then we'll go ahead and pull our filter out and replace our filter. We'll go ahead and put our plugs back in, put oil back in the car, and uh, then we'll kind of crank it over and get the oil running through it a bit. Then we're going to warm it back up again and check the oil afterwards. This car doesn't have an actual dipstick to it, so we're going to have to use the, uh, the electronic dipstick, I think they call it. So it's always a little scary for me because once you put the oil back in, you want to make sure you put in enough and it always feels a little weird, but you can't really tell it until it's warm. Always a little strange. So, all right, so that's the process. So let's go ahead and get started. On the back of the fuse panel cover there's a handy little booklet that you can take out and it will tell you what each one of these fuses are for and also importantly if you ever need to open your boot or your bonnet and the battery's dead you'll, you can clip on here in order to get power to that. Alright so what we want to do is we want to pull fuse C4. So this is the A row here, the B row. This is the C row, and they're numbered 1, 2, 3, 4 from left to right. Grab our little fuse puller, stick it over the fuse, and pull that out. 
Now with our fuse removed, we go ahead and try and start the car. It should run for a second and then sputter and die. There it goes. What we've done is cleared out all the fuel and the fuel rails so that when we've got all the oil back in, we can go ahead and crank it without the engine actually starting. So first thing before we drain our oil, I'm going to go ahead and pop my oil cap here. The reason is I want a little, a little air in the system so when the oil drains, it drains out without air trying to come back in as it's draining out. Another thing I always like to do is I always like to take a look at the seal inside the oil cap. Since this system is usually under vacuum, if this seal is bad, it will cause your idle to go all over the place and your engine to run like crap. So uh, I like to just double check it. Ours looks pretty good. It's a pretty simple thing to pop this guy out and replace it. It should be nice and soft and pliable. That's really all you're looking for and no cracks or splits in there. Okay, with that done, we'll go ahead and raise the car and start draining the oil. To start with, we have two main drain plugs we need to deal with. We have this one here, which is at the base of the oil tank. And then we also have this one up here, which is the crankcase oil. I've got my two containers all set up, ready to go here. I'm going to crack both bolts loose, just so they're just loose, so I can get at them easily, here and here. Then I'm going to pull the tray over, and then I'm going to open them up and drain them both. So something very important about this bolt, if you look at it, you'll see that there's a nut above it and then there's the bolt below it. This is the actual drain, drain plug. This is a steel tank and it looks like this has been sort of brazed or welded on here. And they really want you to take the stress off of the actual tank when you take this off. So you need a 27 millimeter on the top and a 19 millimeter on the bottom. I don't have a 27 millimeter wrench, so I'm going to use my adjustable wrench, which will work just fine. And all you're doing is you're just sort of holding it, and then you're going to pop the, uh, the actual drain plug loose with the 19 millimeter. All right, our drain plug is now loose. Moving over to the drain plug on the car. That's a 15 millimeter. Okay, now that's loose. Now this oil will come out extremely fast, so we want to be careful about that. Make sure everything is completely lined up and we're all set and ready to go. Okay, here we go. Take it all the way down to the last thread. I have my safety glasses on just in case it does splatter all over the place. It's always very exciting. Here we are. Guaranteed to make a fuss. Next is the drain plug on the sump itself. Already loosened this up. Now the oil is going to come out very horizontal here at first. Made this mistake before. This one's always exciting. There we go. Now isn't too bad. Okay, with those draining, I'm now going to go ahead and drain the turbos. Now this is sort of an optional step. There's very little oil that comes out of them, maybe like about four ounces, four or six ounces or something, very little bit. Uh, but for completeness, I'll go ahead and show you the process. It's pretty simple. We just have to pull the plugs on the turbos and drain the little oil out. You can use a teeny weeny little cup to get the oil out because it's so little oil. So I'll get to that next. The turbos have an 8 millimeter hex plug on them, and they should have a washer on them as well. They can be very tight. There's very little oil in these. There's our aluminum washer. There we go. Not much at all. Now we'll go do the other side. Okay, this one's just like the other one. There we go. Not much oil in this guy either. 
There we go, just a little bit. Now that we have all of our drain plugs out, we're going to replace all of our washers. Important thing to note that uh, the aluminum plugs always will have an aluminum crush washer. The reason this has a copper washer is because it's, it's actually a steel plug. It's actually pretty big, pretty heavy. It goes into a steel tank as well, so that would be a copper washer. Kind of the rule of thumb is if the plug or the material that the thing's screwing into is a fairly soft metal, you'll expect the crush washer to be uh, softer than that metal. Okay, another thing, I'm not seeing uh, a magnetic drain plug inside here. It's just open. So we have our new drain plug here. So the new drain plug is essentially identical to the original one. Same size, 15 millimeter on the back and everything, although it just has this magnetic plug in the center. Always a good idea, since you're doing an oil change anyways, you might as well go ahead and swap out this with a magnetic thing. If there's ever any issues inside your engine, they will be all collected around here, provided they're uh, iron, ferric based. But uh, that's a good indication that you got something going on in your engine that would be bad. We'll go ahead and swap that out on this. Put your washers on. Okay, and we're all set. So while the, the sumps are draining underneath the car, we're going to go ahead and lower the car and swap out the oil filter. This is where the oil filter is. It's behind this plastic cover. We want to clean this area up a bit because there's going to be some oil down in here. We don't want any contamination getting back into the car, so we just kind of clean this area up. So next step is going to be to remove that. There's going to be a little bit of a mess. So I'll go ahead and put my rag underneath here. I don't want to get any schmutz anywhere. We have our Hazat filter cover tool here, which is really, really handy. You can even throw a big old wrench on it, or I just use a ratchet in the center. Probably want a bit of an extension on this. Just make life a lot easier. All right. And back with the turkey baster. We all know what that's for. Okay. This is our filter. I'm going to pull that out. Kind of oily. Now an important step whenever you've got one of these filters, these paper filters, is to pull through the pleats here a little bit and just search for metally bits is really what you're looking for. The worst would be something very shiny. Now if this was, um, let's see, a regular 996 uh, uh, normally aspirated with the M96 engine, this filter would be pretty much the same filter but it would have been under the car and since those cars have that issue with the intermediate shaft bearing, I am religious about cutting the tops off of these things, pulling all the pleats out, and going through each one of them with a magnet and a flashlight and doing it out in the sun. It's a critical step if you have one of those cars. For the turbos, for the Metzgers, it's not that big a deal. Uh, they generally don't have things go bad, but if they did, it would all be caught in these pleats. So it's always a very good idea to just sort of paw through these pleats and take a look. So we can see in here that it's just you know, it's not bad. Every one of them, they look fine. What you're seeing, the shiny bits are actually bubbles of the oil that's in there. So uh, you just kind of look through it and just go through each one of these pleats and, and see if you find anything suspicious. It's always a, just a really great double check. Inside the oil filter housing here, you can see there's still a little bit of oil. So we're gonna use our turkey baster, get a lot of use out of this thing, and just pull out whatever's left in here. Also, always a great idea to check for any debris or anything that's in here. Go ahead and take a clean rag and just get in there and kind of wipe out the last little bit of it, clean it out. Okay, just want to clean this out a bit in here, make sure it's all nice and clean in there. Get out the last little bit of oil that's in there. Clean our little tongue here, because it's super easy to do with the cap not in. Okay, that looks pretty good. Next, we want to clean our oil filter cover. We have a couple of gaskets we need to replace as well. This little snout that's in here uh, should be loose. Should just sort of move around a little bit. Big gasket that goes around the cap itself. 
This is our new filter and when you get a new filter it comes with a gasket so you're all set. You want to use a very dull tool to pull this gasket out. You really don't want to bugger these threads at all. If you're looking at this, the gasket is here and goes on the very last slot closest to, the, to the, this flange here. So there's a teeny weeny little cut in that flange right there to get a tool under. It makes it really easy. So then you just pull that off. No big deal. Okay, great. In order to get this cover off in the future easily, I'm going to use a little silicone grease on this gasket instead of just regular engine oil. It only takes a teeny weeny little bit. Okay, we put our gasket back on. Remember it goes in the last slot. So all the way here at the end. Boom. Okay, great. That's good. In addition to the big gasket on here, there's a smaller one right here on the end and you can inspect it and decide whether you think you need to replace it or not. I have some replacements so I'm going to go ahead and replace that one as well. Just pull it out like you did the other one. Just a little o-ring is really all it is. It's just this little guy right here so nothing really, nothing big. And then go ahead and refit our new washer. There we go. And it just sits in the first groove. There's really only one groove here, so it just sits in the first groove like that. All right, we are all set there. Next, we're going to install our filter and our filter cup, but I've got a little, uh, another little trick for you I want to show you before we actually put it all completely back together. Since the next step is going to involve putting a little bit of oil in through the oil filter hole, I'm going to go ahead and raise the car at this point and replace all four of the drain plugs. All right, we'll start with the plug on the bottom of the sump, the dry sump. That again is the steel plug with the copper washer. Okay. Now since I'm draining both of these at the same time, I'm going to go ahead and install the plug that goes in the case as well. A plug with our new crush washer. Oh, with those guys in, we can get these big oil trays out of the way. Push them a little bit out of the way. We have them. Yeah. All right. All right, we'll go back to our drain plug here and go ahead and torque that. This gets torqued to 44 foot-pounds. There we go. Alright, torqued to 44 foot-pounds. Next we torque our case bolt and that gets torqued to 52 foot-pounds. So I've got my torque wrench set to that. It's quite a bit easier to get to. There we go, 52 foot-pounds. Finally, we'll go ahead and replace the turbo reservoir plugs and they get torqued to 22 foot-pounds. Remember, we have our aluminum crush washer on there. Sort of sits up in this little groove here. You wanna make sure you get the washer up in there so that this plug goes all the way up and you can't, you shouldn't see the washer. There we go, 22 foot-pounds. Go ahead and do the other one. Being careful to make sure that our washer doesn't get stuck like that on the outside. We wanna make sure it sits inside the groove. Super duper important. There we go. All right, torque wrench again. There we go. Okay, well with everything clean underneath here and our drain plugs in and torqued, we're done underneath the car, so we'll go ahead and lower it. Our next step is going to be to replace the oil filter and then a little optional thing is once we get the oil filter in, we're gonna pour some oil down the center of it and that's gonna go straight down into the engine 
and it's going to sort of pre-lubricate everything underneath there because we've been, the car's been sitting here without any oil for a little bit and it sort of drained off all the bits. It'll go all the way down, even into the turbos, which is kind of neat. So we'll put about maybe half a quart or so in. So the, the oil filter is pretty simple. It just, it just goes right on. You just push it in until it seats, simple enough. Definitely need a funnel for this bit. It's a little slow going, so don't try to pour it all in at once. Alrighty, that's probably more than enough. Actually put in about a quart. Okay, with that pre-lubed, we'll go ahead and replace our oil filter cover, and it gets torqued to 19 foot-pounds. You want to make sure that it goes on by hand very easily first. The last thing you want to do is cross thread this thing. Nice and easy. Last little bit until it seats. Probably easier to do with a smaller little wrench. Go ahead and switch over to our torque wrench. There's the click. There we go. Pops right off. All right. Clean up any little mess that we've got left over. Should be all good here. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and refill our oil over here. About eight and a half quarts or so ought to do it. And then we'll run the engine up a little bit. Remember we have the fuel pump disconnected, so we'll go ahead and crank it until we have about two bars of oil pressure. And then once that's done, we'll go ahead and put that, that fuse back in, start the car up. We have to warm it back up and then we'll go ahead and check the oil and check for leaks. So we have our blue funnel in and we're all set to go ahead and put all the oil back in. That's our eight and a half quarts in. That's a good start. We'll go ahead and pull our funnel back out. All right. And we don't want to forget to put our oil cap back on. There we go. Next, we'll go ahead and, and crank over the engine and get the oil pressure up to about two bars. Then we go ahead and replace that fuse and start the car and let it warm up and check for leaks. So the gauge we're looking for is this one here and we're looking for this to get up to about two or so as we crank the engine over. It, the engine should not start because we have the fuel pump disconnected. All right, here we go. We'll crank it for just a few seconds. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. See it up above two, between two and three? Perfect. Okay, that tells us that the oil is now circulated through the engine. We can go ahead and replace our fuse and the car should start right up and we should be all set and ready to go. Okay, we'll go ahead and replace our fuse for the fuel pump. Right back in there, boom. Don't forget to put your yellow fuse puller back in. There are two little hooks on the bottom of this. You can see those there. Okay, so they go in little slots and then you push up here and then it snaps into place. Easy enough. All right, at this point, we'll go ahead and start the car. There we go. And that oil pressure over there, I want to make sure that looks good, came right up, right where it should be. Our temperature is still pretty low, so we're going to let the car run for a little bit and warm up because we won't be able to check the oil level until the car is warm. Our temperature is now just above 180, which is about where it is at operating temperature. So to check the oil, we want to push the bottom stock forward once until it says oil. Second time, start measurement, and then one more time. And there we go, we're measuring three, two, one, point. And that's our measurement. Just about, looks like it's about two thirds up. That looks really, really good. We are all set. We'll just double check our oil pressure here. That's idle just above two. And as we spool up a little bit, there it goes just below five, which is exactly what it should be. So that all looks great. Do one last quick check underneath here for any leaks. There's the case bolt. 
There's the bolt back there for the oil tank. The little guys on the turbo on the right side. And then the turbo on the left side as well. So it all looks great. I hope you enjoyed this video of an oil change on our 2004 996 Turbo X50. Hopefully you'll find it useful. If you did, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. And if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I'll go ahead and get right to them. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, we do lots of these sort of how-to videos and driving videos and such and all sorts of fun stuff. So just subscribe and hit the little bell to get notified and you'll be notified the next time we send out a video. We try to send out a couple a week. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, safe travels. Bye.